The nail gun at Ultra Kill is the most powerful weapon in the entire game, bar none. But this raises an intriguing question. Could you recreate something like this in real life? While the answer is quite complex and involves multiple layers of physics and engineering, we can start by breaking down how the nail gun functions in-game and explore how it could be created in real life. The nail gun is a fully automatic weapon with two barrels that individually, each nail does not that much damage, but over time it will become a very, very destructive weapon. On top of this, you can exploit the jumpstart mechanic with the railgun or the red version. This does increasing amount of damage with each nail stuck to a target. Interestingly, the specific type of nail, whether from the blue or red nail gun, doesn't really matter in terms of code functionality for the jumpstart mechanic. They're all the same. It's plus six damage. But the blue version actually upon impact does 0.2 damage, while the red nails or the green nails actually do 0.1. So it is a give and take system there, but it's a difference between the initial hit versus already stuck in the target. On top of this, the weapon also has functionalities with other weapons as all uh, weapons do. Points and saw blades probably have the biggest effect on this. If you have the red cable already stuck to a target, you can switch over to any saw blade, doesn't matter. It will actually create more charge and it pump more energy into the target. While coins, on the other hand, also conduct this electricity and deal more damage. So despite its apparent simplicity, the nail gun's design raises some interesting engineering questions, particularly around heat distribution and propulsion. One of the most apparent weaknesses is actually heat generation within the weapon, which aligns with real world principles of electrical resistance and how energy resistance creates heat. Basically how it works is the higher the energy resistance in a material, if you go too high, it just won't conduct electricity, similar to rubber. But if you have low enough, it will actually flow through it. Uh, energy kind of likes to go through the quickest way possible or the path of least resistance. But on its way to its actual like end target, it will have a sort of microscopic rubbing effect. Yes, this is extremely simplified and I'm not going to get into that. But basically, as the electrons flow forward, it'll rub against the nucleus of an atom. And this microscopic rubbing generates heat. Not a lot of heat, but over time, and if you have a lot of energy flowing through a system, it will create a significant amount of heat. Now, we can deal with heat in a few different ways. Fans are the most commonly used, and they're used in most modern electronics. You basically increase the airflow and conductivity with the air to deliver heat out into the environment, rather than keeping it within the system itself. Second would be liquid cooling where you could use a liquid that covers over a plate and then that's used to sort of distribute and take away heat from it. It'll then be taken to a radiator of some kind and delivered to the air. I actually have a uh, liquid cooler on my system, but uh, it's that important. But the other method is actually direct metal contact. Metals like aluminum and copper are extremely good conductors of heat and actually will effectively dissipate it. There's also another sort of hybrid system where it uses heat pipes. Heat pipes are basically pipes with a microscopic wick that basically uses the air's sort of moisture and it makes it into a miniature liquid loop. Basically, you're just increasing the condensation and you're just taking away that, that heat through water. It's a really fascinating item that we've... Uh, I don't know how long it's been around, but it's probably some of my favorite ways to like distribute heat and such. But in the case of the nail gun, it seems to have these fins along the barrels, and these could act as some kind of heat sink or heat cooling apparatus of some kind. So basically the spinning motion of the barrels would actually increase the amount of air that is going onto the sort of barrels itself. These could be easily made out of aluminum or copper. I'm guessing it's gonna be aluminum because it's lightweight, it's efficient at cooling, and it's commonly used in heat management systems in our world. This would then just be attached to the barrels, which probably have the magnets inside of them. So it's physically touching the magnets and it's only drawing the heat away from them. Now, the propulsion system's actually pretty simple. The barrels are round shaped and they use energy. So I'm thinking this is some kind of coil gun. Now, I prefer rail guns because they're far more efficient at energy to kinetic energy, sort of like um, transference. The more energy you pump into a rail gun, the more you're gonna get at. A coil gun kind of has one advantage up its sleeve. All you need for a coil gun is some wire and a timing system. Basically, if you time it correctly, it'll move forward. If you increase that timing system, it'll make it move faster, therefore making it basically automatic. 
higher timing sequence means more output, but also more heat, which is probably what we see in the green version. So a timed sequence isn't that hard to really, you know, come up with or put together. And one thing I actually really like is that the nails in real life, uh, they're not very aerodynamic now, are they? And in game, we actually see that they have an arc. So I really like that they're actually heavy. But so I'd rate this an eight out of 10 for feasibility. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time.